Perfect. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. All right, guys, just finished laying up. A couple more carbon fiber tracks. These ones are for my parachute. So my parachute, scrappy cup. <laughs> my parachute, carbon fiber, scrappy cup. Anyway, these are gonna go underneath the carbon fiber lid. I'm gonna have a, a zone that when the ballistic chute goes off, it pulls the straps out of a track. And if you do pull the parachute rather than ripping the canopy off or uh, tearing fabric, um, it will pull a zip line out kind of like a Cirrus does. It will rip a thin layer skin off, leave the track and the, and the whole top of the aircraft stays. So the start of a parachute track, <laughs> back to work. All right guys, so a couple more cool brackets. Just cutting these little handheld bandsaws and uh, kind of see what these look like. These I just hand bent them by cutting them out of metal, bending them on here and welding them up. These are for the forward parachute attach point. So I'm um, doing uh, pass-throughs for some cables. I'll double up the attach point, put some bolts. I got a couple more tabs to do on the back, but kind of a crazy looking shape, but I'm happy. <laughs> back to work. All right, so here's my crazy looking part. Should snap in there. There. So you can see now that I get it all put together, um, I'll be able to weld the parachute mount bracket to the forward gusset and the side gusset. Then I'm gonna make a back plate here and tie it in and gusset it down and I'll put a handle on. So this is perfect. <laughs> Little more grinding and uh, actually, no, I'm done. <laughs> Let's weld it. All right, so now I've got to make a plate that goes on this back end. I've got this radius because I bent it, so the strap that holds the parachute can't get cut here. But now I'm making a plate that goes on this back end. The parachute strap goes in here with a bolt through here. But I've got to make sure that I don't have a sharp edge. So I'm folding this plate all the way around to make a radius where the strap comes out so that it can't get cut. So back to work. Perfect. <laughs> All right guys, it's a different way to see the plane. I've never had the top on without the belly, but <laughs> I've had everything on and off a dozen times or more. But what I'm doing now is I've got the top on, and since there should be a piece of carbon fiber between here, I actually measured the thickness of the carbon fiber, it's about 60 thousandths of an inch. I put washers in to equal that to make sure that when I put these Clecos and I pinched it, this arc on the top didn't change at all, so that this arc didn't get any deflection. The reason I'm doing this is because I've now got my parachute box done, mounted. Now I need to make the transition from the top of that box, put a nice big radius arc into the dome of this plane up inside here where the yellow is. And I'm gonna make a nice big radius so as the parachute comes out, it's got a big round and there's no way, even if I was tumbling in the air, a wing broke off, heaven forbid, and I had to pull the parachute, that parachute could come out, pull any direction and not cut a cord. So I've got to make that exit. I've got to make a removable dome here that's a relief area that blows the cap off and pulls the straps out. So I got to do a lot of carbon layup, custom pieces, put the uh, strap tracks in. I want this to be able to blow a parachute, pull the cap off, the straps out, but not take the top of the plane off 
so that if, heaven forbid, I pulled the parachute in the back country of Alaska in the middle of nowhere, I could land and I wouldn't be missing the top of the aircraft. And so I still have a shelter, a protected environment, whether it's snowing, rain, bad weather, I just gotta hang out there for a few days in the cold, that the plane will still be all airtight, closed up in a nice environment. <laughs> There's a helicopter going by. Squirrel. Anyway, so that's the idea. It's a way to pull a parachute and keep an intact closed cabin. And uh, it's gonna be a lot of work. It's gonna be worth it. May I never use it. <laughs> Let's get back to work. Marked out the parachute pad that launches out. This little pad right here is for the rocket deployment. It will pop out, then the rope will drag out the center section. The parachute will pull through here. This will be one of the tracks, goes up to the front of the aircraft, splits off, grabs two forward attach points, and at about this point, it grabs the rear center attach point. So it'll be a three strap parachute um, on both sides of the envelopes of the CG. So no matter where my CG is, the straps are outside of that envelope, and I can never come down any attitude other than what we set the straps for the best impact of tail and mains in relation to that deployment. So, hope that makes sense. I hate to cut this thing up, <laughs> it's really all done, but I gotta cut this out, make an overlapping lip, and then uh, make the parts removable so they can come on and off. So, got a little bit of work to do, more carbon fiber, better get back to work. All right guys, we're getting close. Kind of four layers of overlap from where the hole punches through from the parachute so that I can have a step for the lid that goes on that blows off. And what I'm gonna do, because I'm actually gonna test it. <laughs> Three, two, one. This is gonna be cool, I love rockets. So we'll, uh, we're gonna actually test it. So I gotta make another replaceable top because I'll probably shatter it. So I'm gonna get this done, pop out the part that would be the explosion, explosion part that comes off, splash it, make a copy of it, and then I'll have two, so we can test one and then put one back on. So, back to work. Coming along really well. Got these little teeny tiny ticks. If you come in real close here, you can see them. These are little ticks I'll cut out, but you can see the fresh carbon behind it for the, the step. But I'm gonna go ahead and put this back, in, back on the plane, build the return 90s that will come up under this outer edge that I can bolt this to the parachute box and attach it. And then this will be the blow off. So hope that makes sense, but we're getting close. It's turning out good. Let's get to work. Okay guys, I've been working on some more parts. I started with this. This is part of the tracks for the parachute. And then I turned it into this really crazy looking part. It's got like a tongue and groove end, overlap, couple steps, this little bump with the hole in it is for the strap to go through and then get pinned into the main metal frame up here. So let me show you how this goes together. This, you can see right here, first it has to tongue in, slides in and then drops down. You can see this goes down in the metal and snaps in. Now, if you look down on the top, the strap can go in here, the bolt can pass through it, the strap goes down into the parachute. <laughs> anyway. Uh, I got two more to do, a couple of Ys. I'll make them out of this. I want them to snap lock like that. They'll stay part of the frame. But what I've done is I've done the flange on it and had it attached to the frame this way so that I can still put my top on and off at any time and not have to pull all the straps out of the aircraft. So it's, it leaves the straps laid in, the parachute in, and the top removable for service. So it was a little bit more work. Um, but worth it. So I don't have to really tear anything apart to get into the plane. So, and then at any point, if I need to repack my chute, it's a piece of cake. I don't even have to crack the seal that's the blow off top or open up the side or anything. I literally just 10 minutes, pull a few screws, lift the top of the plane off, access to inspect all the straps, chute repack, whatever needs to be done and snap the top back on. So anyway, a couple more to do. Let's get back to work. All right guys, so this is how this works. This drops down in there, it's got a deeper end. The bolt can go through it. This can lay down. 
and the other straps can pass over the top of it. It actually will fold back and forth in this track, more like this. That tucks in, this goes down, folds, this drops back down into the parachute area. And then it can pull out, unfold, and hang. So, <laughs> ought to work good. May it never be used. All right, guys, what I'm gonna make now is a mold carbon fiber part for three reasons. One, I'm gonna save some weight. Two, I wanna close out the top dome above where I sit in the aircraft. That is usually done out of acrylic, and I've got this piece off of my brother's carbon cup kit, and um, I'm gonna weigh it. Um, I love that you can see through the top of the aircraft, and I still want to have that benefit so I'm gonna, I'm not gonna end up using this. Of course, Mark would be happy about that. <laughs> so I'm gonna take this aluminum, I'm gonna bend the arc, cut out a couple of wood molds, radius them on a router, put it on, and then after I make a full carbon fiber part that closes out, drops down the side, ties in all the air chambers to tighten it up, then I'll sit in the aircraft, find the areas that I want the visibility, and it'll probably be kind of a bit of a triangle shaped window inset into the carbon fiber where the visibil where I want the visibility and I'll save the weight everywhere else. So kind of three things in one. I got lots to do. So let's cut up some wood, get back to work. All right, so I just bent this up. I've got two cuts in it. It's because I got two different angles on the front of this, and I want the carbon fiber to run long and then trace that shape. So I've got my wood on here, I've routed it. This should sit halfway on the wood. There we go. You can see this transition between this shape and this shape is why I've got those cuts. When I lay the carbon fiber though, I'll just bridge across this transition right here. And uh, this is gonna give me my new top. I've cut the aluminum back about a quarter inch back so it's not on this radius. That way when I fold the carbon fiber around this corner and around underneath this bar, I get a nice full radius. If I ran the aluminum right to the edge of metal, and I had two hard 90s. Carbon fiber doesn't like to bend very well like that, especially in a wet layup, like in a configuration like this, where you can't bag it down. So a nice cracked radius edge allows it to fold nice and then fold nice around this one. So this will become one part that I can snap on and snap off. And then I'll put the tracks underneath that on an angle that run up here to these big brackets. That's the parachute attach point. So we got a bit more to do, so let's get back at it. All right guys, I've got everything ready. You can see the metal's all shaped, rounded radius. I just use clear packing tape as a release. You kind of see my uh, cardstock paper here. This is the little trick I use to hide the step from the .035 aluminum to the top of the carbon fiber would make a little bump when I transition. And since I want the two to overlap each other, like this, the two carbon spots, and I don't want to see a crease where the thickness of the aluminum stepped to here. So it's real simple. Cut a piece of thick cardstock, clear tape across it. You won't have any bump from the transition of the metal. And then after you pull the part, you can put it back down and that little paper thickness, you won't even see it. It'll go flat and you won't have a little step or need any body filler at all. So that's my trick. I'm gonna carbon all the way to this blue line. It gives me an inch and a half extra length, extra length down the front. I'll hang it a couple inches down the sides extra. When it's all done, I'll trim it off and I shouldn't need any body work on this panel at all. So I'm gonna get at it, back to work.
of my favorite parts. Um, couldn't have gone any better. Starving, I'm gonna go grab a bite to eat. We'll come back, put some heat on it, flash it, get it gone. We'll be done. Okay, I don't know, oddly satisfying <laughs> to do a really crazy shaped part. Now the backside I've covered all up with clear tape because I've got to make a big Y shaped box beam. That big Y frame is structure and the parachute strap guidelines. So, but there you go. Rather than a, a bent piece of glass, you can see how nice the shape is. Um, art. And then more importantly, that I've got it coming around the bars, tucking under the underbar. And when this goes on, I can put just the slightest little bead of Colt uh, silicone around it. And when it goes on, it won't rattle, it won't move, and it'll be completely airtight. So all the little gap areas are gone. So anyway, kind of a different part. You can see where the pass-throughs are for the wing attach points are. Um, but anyway, Got a few more parts to make, but this is probably, I thought it'd be about a fifth the weight. It's about a quarter of the weight of the, uh, the glass top that was gonna be on it, the plexi top. But I'm still gonna put a big oval window in the area where I can rotate my head and see. I'll put glass back in, so I'll bring some of the weight back up. Ultimately, my guess is with the area I changed back to glass and this part, net will be maybe about half the weight. It won't be um, a quarter or a fifth, but about half when I put the glass back in it. But I'm really excited about it. One more part done, let's get back to work. All right. All right guys, here's our top. Super lightweight, crazy shape. And put my chair over here. It should be a pretty snug fit. Get a little, can't reach quite over there. Let's try it this way. And start again. <laughs> okay. That's it. I got uh, this movement right here when I put my box beam underneath for the straps that pass through. I won't be able to flex this. Actually, that's pretty tight up here and the middle's loose. But look at this fit on the back. You kind of come look at this back angle. You see how tight this two inches of overlap is. So the rain water coming this way, I've got them overlapped this way so no water can backtrack into it. But that is a perfect fit. It's a little wet, nice coat of clear coat on here and that'll be done. Let's put the C-channel beams underneath for the straps. We'll make it so I can stand on it. We'll Button it up. <laughs> Super happy. It's as good as it gets. We got lucky this time. <laughs> Let's get back to work. All right, guys. <laughs> so this may only be one part, but that was a lot of work. This is the parachute box. First, I had to make a two-stage part that had this side and the box at the same time, then an arc top cut, then a flange mold, uh, and then the outlet strap part that attaches to the metal box for the strap hook. So there's a lot going on. Also the rocket launch pad. That sounds pretty cool. <laughs> the rocket launcher goes right here. The strap with the reinforced extra thick um, area here where the strap passes through into the parachute ejection pod. So um, that's a lot of work. 
but I just got it clear coated and I'm gonna go install it in the frame. It's the last time I put it in, it's not coming back out. So back to work, assembly time. All right guys, I'm down to the third part that's going in the plane and staying in. This is a parachute track. You can see this crazy curve this way, angles coming off of here, funny bump on the bottom. Anyway, tongue and groove end here. <laughs> it's got a lot of movement in it, but uh, really cool part. So I'm gonna show you where this goes. This is a strap track, it's got all the nut plates in it. I've made it to tongue and groove into this bar on top. Slide that in, and then this bump drops in. There we go. Snap lock, <laughs> we're down. So the strap is against no sharp metal edges, a embedded rounded cup with about 15 layers of carbon fiber, so it can't break, and that was laid up against metal. So it is absolutely impossible for this to pull any direction and get the carbon to crack or uh, do anything to the metal frame. So I got a nice soft rounded edge. That's the way it hooks. That's the way it picks. So anyway, I'm super excited. That is snap locked in. All the nut plates coming in the top and around here are for the lid that go on it, the top of the fuselage, and the removable pull out area that blows off when the rocket goes off. So one more part down. Three parts in, never coming out. We're starting assembly. So there's gonna be a few things I gotta put on and off a few more times, but I'm finally at the stage where some things are going in permanent. So I'm stoked. Let's get back to work. It's only midnight. We got lots to do. Okay, guys, another part going in to stay. It's my V for victory. <laughs> Anyway, this part's really cool. Took a lot of different molds to make it happen. The way this works is this is gonna hide these bars so you see only carbon fiber on the inside. Go here. There we go. <laughs> Done. So what's really cool about this is they'll hold in when the bolts go through here. They'll hold the carbon, a bolt right here. You can see it right there. And then look at how much room I have in here. This is the new carbon fiber top I have on the aircraft that's got an arc. That's why this has so much curve to it. And then this depth, I have this extra depth. So the straps to the parachute can run back and forth and, and overlap in this area. So as it pulls out, they just unfold as it comes out and nothing can tangle. So that's what these tracks are for. Parachute attach points, and you won't see. There we go, now I don't have to hold it. <laughs> and then when I screw the top on, all the top stays as the parachute pulls out, except for the little tracks that open up this, and the whole dome and airplane is still sealed with no air coming in. So everything stays intact. This area right here, I'll put in a plexiglass arc. I still gotta mold that in so that I've got a light I can look up and see out and uh, finished carbon fiber look. So I'm gonna go ahead and bolt this in. Got a couple bolts on the bottom that attach to the tube frame. And the only other place it attaches is when the top comes on, it hooks through all these nut plates. So very excited. Let's get back to work. All right, this part's just about done. Straps for the parachute. This right here needed to have lots of angled cuts through this carbon fiber part for the flap handle. So just sticky sandpaper on a long bar. I cut this track an eighth inch too small so it had all these different angles and heights. I could then use this bar and work my way down. And now it's done. And that is as straight as you're gonna get for the flat handle pass through. So when the flat handle bar goes in there, all the straps will go on top of it. And then when the chute pulls, it's all lapped over top of the flat handle. So that's ready to go. Next project.
right, guys, so this part we just threw together really fast. It's pretty cool. Still got it shaped, lightweight, flexible. What this is for is for doing something that feels like I'm playing, not working, which I don't know, building airplanes is playing. So right here is where the rocket jettisons out. You can't really see it, but there's a step here, a big center section and a track for the straps for when the parachute comes out. So this is a sacrificial one I'm making just for a test. Three, two, one. So I'm gonna trim this to match the permanent one, which is a lot thicker. Um, I'm gonna get it matched exactly. I'll thicken this up until it matches the thickness of this one. I'll make them literally perfect identical pieces for a blow off top. The reason I'm doing that is I'm going to launch the rocket on the ground and have it yank the parachute out of the ejection pod. One. So I wanna make sure it works perfect before the real world day that I never pulled a shoot. <laughs> so I gotta test it first, make sure it's good, so. Okay, got it all taped off, time to cut it out. Skylight, parachute, tear out strap joints. So I'm gonna cut it out, lay it up in carbon, make my steps, put in the plexi, back to work. All right, what I've got done now, I sanded the whole thing down to a 60 grit, get a lot of texture to help the next layer of carbon fiber bond. And uh, I have the clear tape, just clear packing tape, all the areas I don't want the carbon fiber to stick to. So now I'm gonna lay carbon fiber on this entire tray and I'm gonna overhang all the edges so I can trim it off afterwards but everywhere where this clear tape is, the carbon fiber won't stick. So once it dries, I can flip it over, finish cutting the little ticks that I left to hold everything in place while I did this, and cut those out, pop these two parts off from the backside, and then there'll be a step left where these were, and then I'll cut out those joints about a half inch overlap. That'll give me a place to embed my window into, my skylight, and it'll give me a little step to reattach the Y back on, um, and then I'll seal that in with just caulking and, and clear bra it into place so no water can come through from the top, but if I ever had to pull the parachute, it'll just pull that clear bra and silicone right off, but from the outside of the aircraft, in, inside the aircraft, it'll be almost invisible, it'll just be a little tiny dark line where the parachute goes. Okay, so <laughs> a little extra resin. You don't want to leave it in a cup because it'll start to get hot and then it compounds on itself if it's really thick. You can actually start a fire, so always dump it out. But what I've got done now, you can really easily see where the carbon's gonna stick and where it won't. I, uh, I just took resin and I poured it on here and I kind of use my fingers and I just kind of scrub it in. And what I'm trying to do is actually, if there's any tiny particulates of dust left, I wanna get it out and into this resin. So now I'm gonna go through and scrape off all the resin I can out of this, dump it in the trash, and then I can stick the new layers of carbon fiber on and I know that any bit of dust that was left as I scrubbed it, worked its way into here. I'll give you a good idea what that looks like. I blew it off, alcohol it twice, and you can see how black that is. And I'll just go through, scrape off all this basting I did, get the resin back out. And when I get it all off of here, it'll still be trace resin in, in down in all the little pores. And then I can put on the next four layers of carbon fiber in here, right across the whole thing, up the sides, when I get those in, I'll make a giant bag and I'll actually bag around both sides and put down the peel ply, the foam, and suck the whole thing tight. Now, on a mold, I can just bag it to the table and suck it down one way. But when I've got a complex part like this, 
I need to get the vacuum on both sides and let the bag make the shape of the part and pull it all tight. So I need to scrape out all this resin, clean it up, prep it, lay some carbon, bag it. We'll get our part done in about an hour, maybe an hour and a half. Let it set aside and dry for a couple hours. We'll be ready to trim it out in about four or five hours. Back to work. Party begins. <laughs> I love carbon. You make so much cool stuff with it. You always want to pull from the middle outward or you'll make lots of wrinkles. So the way I'm going to do this now, each layer, I'm going to stagger. I got this one going right into the corner. The next one I'm going to run about a half inch beyond it up the wall. The next one further up the wall. I'll do a four layers total. The last one I'll run all the way up the wall, run it long and trim it off after. So I'll work this down and move on to the next one. Hey guys, I hope you liked that video. I feel like I kind of just cut it short, but I got a lot more videos to come. I feel like I'm getting close because I'm in final assembly mode, which is just driving me to the finish. I, I just love completing a project. So I'm working longer, working later, and uh, just trying to kick it out. So I got cool stuff coming. I'm trying to get more people in aviation, passion to get out and do whatever it is they love, whether it's airplanes, hot rods, cars, RC, I don't care what it is, whatever you're passionate about. Get out and do it, enjoy it. Love life, live life. I, I can't believe this, look at this. You can see my mountains in the glass, carbon cub in the window, and a mountain right there screaming my name to get scrappy done, because I gotta go land on the top, like way up there. <laughs> nice. All right guys, you know the drill. I hope you like, subscribe, send people my way. Follow your passions. Let's get back to work.